Hey everybody, welcome to the Aftershock Corner. This is this is the premiere episode, season two, episode one, since we're in a new area now. Um, last season sucked. Absolutely. <laughs> Other shit last season? Yeah, was pretty bad. <laughs> Cause like, Google Hangout sucked. Yeah. No one could do the show ever. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So we're doing it this semester on college. As I said before, I'm pretty sure I said it in the first episode, we decided that we're gonna continue the aftershock corner on days where not a lot of people can show up. Yep. So what we haven't covered on Massive Wrestling Corner, we will cover here. So that's kind of the plan yep. on that. And then we also have the Retro Wrestling Review Series, which, which we do, do Friday. Which we do Friday. We're doing that Friday. Uh, what pay per view are you for that? WrestleMania One. WrestleMania One. That's the WrestleMania season. And then we're also gonna have a past superstar where we talk about. We're gonna have a superstar of the week. We yeah. can't call it Legend of the Week because that last one with Lesnar is already. I will. I will say week. this. Um. So I want to kind of do a wrestling uh, wrestler of the week series for the aftershock one as well. Not necessarily. Can't do it this week because so I don't have one. I got one. I mean, it's kind of easy. AJ Styles. Okay. I mean, and, and I say that because even though he's, I mean, I think, I, I'm pretty sure out of everyone on the roster, he, even though a lot of people will disagree with me, he's been, he, uh, already he's been on a, lar a long, uh, he's been on a long segment with The Miz. Yep. He's already had two matches. One was with Chris Jericho, which he won. He has been undefeated since arriving. Um, and he, um, and he well, yeah. lasted, I think, the second longest in the Royal Rumble behind Chris Jericho. So how, we get, how Superstar of the Week works is, um, I'm gonna pull up, see the fall mid because basically, and put it like this: it's basically like Power Twenty Five. Okay, I was in. I pull up his bio, read off his bio on Wikipedia, and then we can do some some of his best matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I, we can't do it because so that's why we can't do it because we don't. I don't have any. Uh, we might as well just go with AJ Styles just because of the age. I think we should do it by like what they accomplished during the week. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, but on the Metro West Review Series, it will be. Yeah, it will be different. Like past stuff, like past stuff that they were doing that made them so huge at WrestleMania 1 to that point. Yeah. Which at that point is probably Mr. T. Not the Hawaii. It's probably Hogan. Mr. T and Hogan. So I'll probably do Hogan first since. Uh, Maybe a twofer. But since um, he was uh, in the main event. So was Mr. T, so was Paul Lundoff and Brady Baker. So we'll decide that. Yeah, but um, yeah. But yeah, um, so WWE Smackdown. Oh, wait, should we do NXT first or Smackdown? I, th I said we do Smackdown. Uh, did it take place or just happened? Let me see. I can remember. I'd say... Actually, I'd say it, I'd say it took place. Alright, let's go. Okay, uh, Smackdown took place on... Uh, January 28th, 2016, our commentators are Byron Saxton, um, Marano, uh, Ranallo, Marano, Mauro Ranallo, and Jerry the King Lawler, which by the way is like my favorite commentary team right now. Jerry the King Lawler being a heel like is just great. Yeah, um, can we make him heal? Can we just get rid of JBL, put on the mob, fucking, uh, Mero, uh, Murrow, yeah, Murrow, Ronaldo, yeah. yeah. I'd rather see him. It is weird. It I is can't pronounce his name for shit, but I'd rather have him than JBL any day. And it is weird Jerry seeing Jerry the Jerry Lincoln Lawler, even though like he's been here before. It is weird seeing him heal again, especially because he doesn't, because he's been faced for so long. So yeah, it is. It's been. It's been um, but it's a, I think it's definitely a breath of fresh air. I think for SmackDown. I think I think he plays. Um, see, the funny thing is, he plays the Corey Gray style of heel. Yeah. Like he he he. Go, he sides with the heel most of the time, but he actually gives legitimately the facts to back it up. And then he agrees when the face commentator actually does bring up a good point. And then you have uh, Ronaldo basically kind of being in the middle of the neutral ground. Which, well, I love Ronaldo on, uh, which he, he and and not only that, but he also calls the action. And Jerry is actually calling and along thing with too, the action. So is Brian Sachs. Another thing uh, too is Mar Ronaldo. He'll talk about like. Say, hey, I ain't called AJ Styles, Alberto Del Rio, AJ Styles' matches back in the day. He'll even talk about how he called his matches, what his, accompl his accomplishments were. So. Yeah, seriously. And, and seriously, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you this, guys. I mean, if, if you don't want to watch SmackDown for anything else, watch it for AJ Styles' matches and the commentary. Yep. I mean, 
Even then, just watch the whole show for the commentary. The commentary is fucking solid. Yeah. Uh, now with uh, Ronaldo, Saxon, and Lawler, um, and I, I think mean, I think that should be the main t- commentary team for both Raw and SmackDown and pay per views. To be honest, I want maybe, to actually maybe not it's per pay per views, but for Raw maybe Ronaldo, Cole, and Lawler. It'd be kind of weird though. It'd be kind of weird because you have two lead guys, but like I can understand if you want to keep Cole. Because I feel like in the pay-per-views it should be, it should be Ronaldo, uh, Byron Saxon, by, uh, by, maybe Ronaldo, not Byron Saxon on pay-per-views, but Ronaldo, Cole, Cole, and Jerry. Because and then for like Raw, I can find maybe he could pull off Miracle, JBL, Ronaldo, and Michael Cole, I don't or know. not Michael Cole, but uh, G, uh Byron Saxon. Byron Saxon, yeah. I'm fine with that. Or hell, bring up, bring up, um, or put, or put in Rich Brennan on Raw. Yeah, I hate how he kind of, uh, I mean, I hate that he doesn't do commentary anymore. Yeah, I love, I love him on commentary. I think he's great on commentary. I think him and, uh, honestly, I think, uh, Ronaldo and, and, and Rich Brennan and Corey Ray should be the commentary team. Oh, yeah. For everything. <laughs> That's just me. Um, like, wait. Yeah, it's just way when they on commentary. Like that, that, like that whole team is a perfect setup for like heel. I know. I, I like heel. Lo- I like heel Lawler too, though. Yeah, I do too. But I, I think he should be a free show guy, though. Lawler. But no, that shouldn't even happen. Oh, that, that, that was that was bullshit. I was bullshit with that. But anyway, uh, we kick things off the new day promo. So what, what um, happened? What did you say? I, I, uh, they talked about the block, how uh, they bash him. They call him Big Booty. They don't come out with those unicorn ones anymore because I guess WWE said. Thought it was stupid now, but um, what else did they talk? They talked about too how probably had to get rid of them because if they wore them, they knew that they were gonna chant "Line My Penises." And they can't chant that. They want them to. Yeah, them. exactly. Which is blatant censorship. Um, Pen- for the for the record, and I'm just gonna point this out. You're getting butt hurt literally over a medical term for yeah. a male organ. When has it, it's not when like he, it's one. not like he said llama cock. It's not like he said llama dick. He said llama penises. It's a lot. It, it's so much lighter compared to your brother didn't have much fight left in him, did he? So don't give me this bullshit where bullshit. you know, like you're gonna tell me that they can't chant llama penis. It's blatant censorship. It, it's no wonder why half the crowd you go to are dead. I'm gonna be flat out honest there. But anyhow, yeah. what else do they? I don't really remember much of the pool more. Then they brought up the Usos too. Then the Usos come out and they do this new thing now where they'll go, whoa, 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 in the crowd after you know, actually you've probably seen it before. Yeah, um, I've, I've heard about it. I think uh, it's pretty cool, but it's kind of weird that the true crowd gets behind that. But I don't know. It gets against the crowd over there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and they talk about how uh, they want to face them. But the New Day say it's a three on two situation. Well, Miz came up too and talked about how he got insulted. Forgot how he came out. And he talked about how it was four on two, so then they went out Titus O'Neil and Dolph Ziggler, or Zagler. Um, at this point, like we talked about, I'm kidding. You know, All right. way. I mean, I'm not. It's not, it's not a horrible match to start off the show. I actually no. like the match setup. So, yeah. Uh, they actually had a reason to add the match. In a way. Um, like, oh my god, Ziggler. Did anyone, I'm gonna just say it. Ziggler, Ziggler looks awful. Yeah. He looks like he's, he's just burnt. Like, he's CM Punk 2.0 right now. He, not I, even see, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say CM Punk, but like more Boston areas, like towards yeah. the end of TNA. Like he's just not in TNA. Like, he's, you could tell he's just sick of this shit. I wonder, he, and, He's, everybody's like, why did I be signed? Like, yeah, I mean, like he doesn't. I, I don't think that was a creepy, but he just. Doesn't. He 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 really it doesn't look happy, and it's it's so sad because he's so fucking talented. I want to go somewhere. He he deserves to be. And I just he deserves just as much credit to be WWE champion as AJ Styles, as Seth Rollins, yeah. as John Cena. He deserves that, man. It's such a shame. Maybe he's never gotten to that elevation since then. The world, world title. The worst part about it is it's not that they're not pushing him. They'll push him and then like, oh, forget it. You're done. 
Do I just push him like... Well, like yeah, or, or the stupidest reasons too, like he gets an injury, even yeah. though he came back for the pay-per-view and they had him job out to Del Rio. Well, he was, like the sole, he was like the sole survivor at Survivor Series. One of the Intercontinental title and then they took it off him because he took a comedy thing. Like, yeah. some, of the, shit, some of the shit that WWE do out of spice is just fucking ridiculous. And then, um, then he like, and then like he was getting jobbed out like 2013 when he turned oh, face. No, that was, don't even. I, I was entertained. He was probably in 2013, yeah. though. He was probably the most entertaining I've seen. That, and that's the funny thing is like he was doing great as an entertaining baby face, and it just oh my god. They should have given it back. Did. I, I don't have a problem with putting it on Del Rio if all if it was gonna give it to a face Ziggler. And it didn't happen. And, but it never happened. And they like this. They like went he away. Ended and into, he ended up going into. A stupid feud with AJ and Biggie, and which made AJ sense to happen. You knew it was happening, but uh, I would have rather seen them go down. And then, um, uh, anyway, and then uh, the stuff that happened that happened last year that we talked about with that whole relationship thing. Yeah, I think that's what did it. I mean, obviously they didn't want to do anything with him. Yeah, um, they're just giving. You can him even tell in the way he doesn't really wrestle oh. anymore. Yeah, he doesn't really have a move set. He just sometimes will just hit a super kick and then that's it. So. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, I don't mean why should he care? Yeah. I don't blame him for that. Like, why? Why should he give his best performance? Yeah. You know, he's done it time and time again, and obviously he's getting nothing for it. So why bother? He's been in this company what? Fucking since he retired as Dolph Ziggler from like 2009. 2008. Two. 2016. So seven years as Dolph Ziggler. He's got nowhere. Nothing. Uh, but um, like the match, um, Titus O'Neil got the pinfall victory on Miz. I uh, like that the future Titus O'Neil. I think he does have some talent. Oh, he, he's he's great. Yeah. yeah. But the funny thing is, is, like if they did this with Ziggler, they're gonna do it with Titus. Because yeah. uh, he said he really is that good, though. I mean, the John isn't wrong. No one's wrong. He's he, he's got a main event future ahead of him. But like, there's so much going um, against him just from. Just from a view of what we've seen, he's black. Yep. You know, and it's just like there's never been a black WWE champion. I don't think there ever will be a black WWE champion. Black and even if they get close, they won't win the belt. You'll we'll get that Booker T situation that was that happened. They get the our truth treatment. Yeah. 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 No. So it's. I just see the same thing happening to Titus, just as it did to Ziggler. But great match. Um, and Titus O'Neil, I mean, Titus O'Neil deserves to be pushed. It's not. He's a really good guy. I heard that he's, he's fantastic. Fucking great. Yeah, he's fantastic. He, he is the Black John Cena, and I don't know how people haven't realized that yet. Yeah. Like you should be pushing this guy as your next baby face. Not Roman Reigns. Right. Not Roman Reigns. Like I would, I would love it if Titus won the World Rumble. I would yeah. love it. I would be marking out. If Titus won the Rumble, I would be like, "Holy shit, yay! Titus I mean, is winning." And he's got a good, you know. Um, he's got a great move set. He's yeah. got, he's got, he's, like he's he knows how to wrestle. He he can wrestle. I feel like if you put him in with any any of the best athletes, you can go. Oh yeah, legitimately, and I, I don't think I'm stretching that. So anyway, um, would you rate this match? Uh, I would like a five star rating because I like to do that. I like I've been watching Brian and Vinny a lot. Three out three of five stars. Uh, it feel like it was kind of one of those pulling together tag team matches. So but it was it was good for what it was. So good, three good, out of ten. Good old uh, matchup. I'm fucking. I, I I can't. I already can't wait to talk about those. I don't even see the match. Uh, Neville versus Kalisto. The U.S. title. Great matchup. Um, awesome. Yeah. Definitely could. If it, I definitely would like to see this um, on a pay per view. I would love to see this at WrestleMania. No, I I would not mind seeing yeah. WrestleMania. Um. They, I can't. They pretty much just did a lot of, you know, flips and kicks. Um, oh, that's, that's yeah, that's good high yeah. spot shit. Yeah, they did a lot of high that's spots. Um, and um, uh, one spot, my favorite spot was the ending when ne when Kalisto reversed the German suplex into the Salido del Sol for the victory. Hey, yeah, yeah, that. Did. And I like Kalisto as a uh, United States champion. Um, I think uh, it could be uh, what team you know. X Division champion Wayne should could should have been if he had won the X Division title in TNA was a little more relevant. Um, 
Yeah, I agree. I and agree I think Tigua Udo can be a good champion. I agree. Can be that good underdog, underdog champion. I agree. A match I would like to see in the future is uh, when Sin Cao is healthy. Is uh, I I mean it probably wouldn't happen. Heel versus heel. You know, Sin Cara I, versus and it, can, it would make sense because Sin Cao could turn heel, saying that you. You didn't go back care. to the Punico gimmick and just throw even, on his mask too. You didn't even care that I got injured because you just became successful and didn't give a shit about me hitting I think, uh, yeah, I think you should ditch the Sinkara mask. Yeah. Go back to... I think he should keep the name, but he should ditch the mask and say, yeah, the Lucha dead. And the symbolic message of the Lucha Dragons are dead. Yeah. Um, and, um... Yeah, Kalisto's just a good champion. Um, I love Kalisto. And, uh, I mean, I, it, I think him and Neville are gonna have a great, like, friendly feud. That's yeah, that'd be cool. Like these are matches. These are matches I would not mind seeing. And hell, if if AJ, if they if they do what I feel like, what I fear they're going to do, and they're gonna just put them in the mid card division, put him in that equation too. I'd love yeah. to see these guys, like all three of these guys, do a do a loud match. Trying to make an ultimate X without calling an ultimate X. I would love to see that. Okay. Well, um, I don't know if they should do a ladder match though, because with the injury weeks, because um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm worried about it. But then if someone gets hurt in the match, then yeah. Um, but I will say this. Um, so yeah, I mean the highlight reel with Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. I like this. Um, um this what happened? So is you know, I'm, Jericho. I'm so confused. Does that mean that Jericho is fighting? Is gonna fight Ambrose? No, nah, he wasn't acting. But, uh, Are you kidding? I kind of wish they, they really would've, forget they, about this shit. Uh, I kind of wish they would have brought up what happened in Night of Champions when Jericho. I mean, didn't leave. Let me guess. In the main event, they won, right? Just tell me. By disqualification, which is why I uh, have a fall in SmackDown, which I'll get into in the main event. Okay. okay. Um, but um, Jericho talks about you know how they're got, they're pretty much they are best friends. Um, Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose, the brothers, and. Uh, Ambrose and Reigns say they don't fight over stupid shit, and they talk about a bunch of scenarios, you know, like, uh, wrecking somebody's call, or forgetting, you know, their birthday and stuff like that. Um, but they say, um, but Ambrose and Jericho asks, well, what's gonna happen when you guys face off at Fastlane? And literally they just say, well, I'm gonna tear them apart for the championship. Um, when the adults on the line, we're gonna tear each other apart, and we're gonna go through whatever it takes to become champions. So I like that Ambrose said that. Ambrose did most of the talking too, which is really yeah, that's fun. refreshing. That's and then um, the Wyatt family, well, teleports to the side. They don't make an entrance. They the thing goes off. You've seen it before. The video package, and then they just teleport to inside. And Bray Wyatt talks about how he conquered the beast at the Royal Rumble. Yeah. And um, then he says that tonight he talks some more BS. And Roman Reigns even says, "No one even understands what you're saying." Why don't you just come down to the ring and fight? And Bray Wyatt says that you guys are going to have a lesson tonight in a six-man tag team match um, with us. It was pretty much the same match at Night Champions, except they were blowing with it. So I gotta, I gotta tell you that right now. Well, I'm glad. I like. I always love the team Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Harper. I think that's yeah. the best fucking team that you could go with. Braun Strowman just makes you group not mean anything. But I'd like to get out of wrestling, please. Um, but. As far as this goes, say Braun Strowman is still in the group. I think what needs to happen is Bray needs to be taken out of Mania, and the person that then takes over for the Wyatt family is Luke Harper, because I think Luke Harper has a lot of potential to be a main eventer. Yeah. I think he has um, a lot of different uh, elements that he can bring to the main event scene, or even to the IC title scene that not a lot of people have. He's probably the, like the small, um, as a character wise, he's probably the smartest one in the group too. He is, he is one of the most intelligent ones. I feel like he should lead the group. Yeah. And then maybe later on in, the, in their future, maybe when he has the IC title, we could have a feud between him and Bray Wyatt for the IC championship. I think that'd be, yeah, I think that'd be, and I think that'd be a great feud because guys know each other so yeah. well that they chemistry is just that great that they would have a great match. So, and um, they can even, they can even, you know, say that. You know, Luke Harper can. You have to make the Wyatt look strong. Luke Harper can say he took the Wyatt family somewhere, and Bray Wyatt can do shit to the Wyatt family if it takes the Wyatt family. Like, yeah, if it takes it to the win, win tag team gold. Yeah, and I, I, that's the thing. I can, I can totally see. You know, I don't want. If anything, get rid of Strowman. 
Yeah. And maybe put in a new guy like here's a great idea, Elias Sampson. Yes. Perfect. Perfect guy. I don't think he's made put him, yet, put, uh, put him with Eric Rowan and he's your they're your new tag champs and then you have um you know, you have Luke Harper win the IC belt and they're actually holding all the gold like the shield did. Yeah. So then you got that going for you. I think that'd be great. I mean, yeah. I'd like to see that. Elias Sampson. But anyway, happy. yeah, we're, we're just kind of rambling on. But um, next thing is uh, Curtis Axel with Heath Slater, Bo Dallas, and Adam Rose with AJ Styles. I didn't see this match, uh, mainly because I wanted to hear, I wanted to see two things. First off, AJ Styles and SmackDown. Uh, second off, uh, Mark Merrow's commentary. Or uh, Mano Ronaldo. Uh, I always call him Mark Merrow. Merrow Ronaldo's commentary. Yeah. So we get the match. Boss, I think the the commentary is great. There was no botch except for like I think. You think he went for the DDT? Off the, the, off the, off the, the, off the, the he did the spring. He was gonna try to hit the springboard DDT, but um, I don't think uh, Curtis Axel knew uh, AJ Styles that well in the ring, so yeah. he th he thinks it was the Pele kick. So that was a clear botch. But what was funny is it, it didn't. You wouldn't have been able to tell because Mark Marrow. Mark no, no. Marrow. Covers it up really well. Uh, yeah, Amaro uh, Ronaldo covers it up extremely well by saying it was a penalty kick. So, great job on. And AJ Styles uh, finally hit the side of glass in this match. Well. I, well, I do have a problem there. Um, I don't mind that he hit the Styles Clash. I know. I wish he did it on Wall. But I wish he did it on Raw, on Jericho. Yeah, or at the Rumble, or at the Rumble. I don't think you should have done it on SmackDown. Because if you were going to just throw it away on SmackDown, um, that was a dumb move. I'm going to just say it right away. Um, but, you know, good match. it was a great match. Um, uh, uh, it was a good match for what it was, actually. Yeah. I, I, I got to give it a, like a two-star rating. And, uh, two-star rating for that. Uh, I give this segment three-star rating for the hell it real. Neville versus Kalisto, you can say four-star match. Yes. So there we go. Uh, great, good show so far. Look at that. Yeah. Charlotte with Ric Flair versus Natalia. What? Uh, what happened here? Good match. Uh, Charlotte um, looks over Natalia's knee and then. Uh, it it all. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Natalia makes a little bit of a comeback and then Charlotte gets her to figure eight. Yeah. Um, but then afterwards she tries to attack her, but then Becky Lynch runs out and makes the save. So. I think they're setting up a triple threat match with Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Sasha Banks at um, Fastlane. I am totally fine with that. Can we put Natalia in there, please? Um, I, I think so they're putting. I think they're putting. We'll talk about what that when we talk about Raw, but I think they're putting Bleed Bellow in instead. Which we'll do this too much, Matt. I, I want Natty in this, please. Yeah. Please put Natty in. I feel like they are still. They, really, they pretty much only use Natalia when Cody Deep is not around, which is stupid. Absolutely. This is one of the worst reality shows series I've ever seen. It probably worse than the Kardashians, and I, that's no overstretch. I'm serious. Oh, that's so, so bad. Um, and I don't know how people can enjoy that show. Why is it still on the air? Thank you, I agree. Um, but, yeah. Um, probably because the ratings are skyrocketing because the drama fucks that like to watch reality shows. Fuck those um, people. Yeah, they're exactly. They're not wrestling fans. That's why I don't like watching the show, to be honest. Anyway, I mean, not all people, because we know a few people that just don't, I do watch wrestling, but not like as much as we do. Yeah. But anyway, yay. It's going to be a true threat. I'm happy. Uh, and they're actually building with the Divas division right, but who knows, at the rest of the year they keep building it to Jack and shit again. I hope they do your um, idea, but... What's, what's, what's sad is that it seems like there's going to be no Paige. No. And it's pretty upsetting because I really would love Paige. And Paige is back and healthy too. This. I just realized that. Paige is back and healthy. She's... Uh, I think she should be in the fail forward predicament with all these checks. I hope they do your idea and do Sasha for the world championship. Yeah. But they're not, they're not going to, but never will. It's like fantasy almost. But anyway, hey, I, I'm not going to diss on the match though. It's yeah. good. So 2.53, what? 2.5. 2.5. So we got one match, 2.5, uh, 3, I know, 2.52, um, 
uh, three for the segment, uh, four for Neville Kalisto, New Day in this, three, uh, three for the New Man Tag, New Day promo, I'm assuming it's a five. Obviously, it's the New Day. Five. Uh, okay. And then, um, so with that being said, uh, now we're on with our truth outside. Oh my gosh, this. did you see this? No, I didn't. You didn't see this? I didn't know. So the outside like stretch it and gold dust was waiting. You probably Chris probably Oh I heard about this, never mind, yeah. <laughs> I need a so, tag team partner. Because he was talking about how he talked about his and our truth doesn't want to be his tag team partner. Um and uh Gold Dust says he wants to be golden truth. Or truth and gold, one of the two. Um They're just hilarious together. I hope they actually do become a tag team. I agree, I, I think they're um, great. I mean, if they don't do it, then maybe it, they could do Cody and Goldust. There's an idea where they have uh, Cody Rhodes come out and say, don't try to heal, please. Um, and then, uh, but it's all right, great. I'll give this a three star because yeah. it's funny. Yeah. Uh, Bruno Wild, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, or Street Jericho, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. So good was this match. Pretty good. Um, Pretty good. Pretty good match. With um, Braun Strowman, of course. Oh, God. We forget that. Yeah, but, his presence um, ruined the match itself. <laughs> but how um, good was the match? Pretty good match. Uh, they got the heat on uh, Dean Ambrose for a while, and then uh, Roman Reigns does the hot tag, and he hits the Superman punch um, on uh, Eric Rowan, I think, or Luke Harper wanted to do. Then Braun Strowman pulls him out of the ring, which causes a disqualification, um, and throws him into the barricade, and Braun Strowman's a monster, so he can't be hurt, because he's overpowered, and he can't sell either, that's why he can't be hurt, because he doesn't want to sell. Um, and Pretty much uh, the white family beating the crap out of um, Roman Reigns and everyone, and then the Big Show comes out and makes the save. Body slam. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I, floor, I heard about that. And then that, he has yeah. a face off at Strowman for a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, and I heard he's he gets a baby face now. He gets attacked by the Wyatt. So it's almost like a Joe Show reunion too. Yeah, and then yeah. Big Show grabs Braun Strowman in the foot, looks at him like with intensity, in his eyes, throws him out of the ring. Then Wyatt tries to hit the sister Abigail, which I don't understand how that would work out for him because it just wasn't going to work out. And he then Wayne's counters it to the Superman punch and we all celebrate together. Um, I actually like the fact that Big Show was face again. Um, Thank you, God. I just didn't think any, he was going anywhere before. That's a heel. Yeah. Uh, just keep him face. And I think it fast lane the building to a match between Big Show and Strowman. Um, God which will damn, be a, that's not fast, that's slow lane. But which will be... Um, maybe Big will be, Show will be fast. Maybe if he hits the yeah. spear, it'll be all right. But. Can just squash him in two minutes and I'll be please, fine with Please, please. Big Show, please squash him in two minutes. I would love for you to just I know. squash this fucker. Just get him out of wrestling. <laughs> just knock him out. We should change the hashtag Big Show retire. The hashtag Strowman retire. Oh, you can't Strowman get out of wrestling. But yeah, um... Overall, SmackDown was a pretty good show. I'll give it a uh, 7 out of 10. Passing grade. Yay. Yay. All okay, right, so NXT. then uh, NXT. So I don't have my notes, so I'm just going off memory. Uh, the first match was because uh, every, everyone that was in that triple threat match from last week um, between Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, and um, Wait, we Baron Corbin. Yeah, but I'm saying everyone that was in that match had like tune-up matches. Oh, uh, I see. On this show, so okay. I like that. I did like I, that. Yeah, I know that Sami Zayn fought Ty Dillinger. No, um, he fought fought Adam Rose. Never mind, he fought Adam Rose. But you came out with a "Welcome to the Revolution" theme, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Um, I like that Adam Rose throws those up on NXT because he he's a great character on NXT. Honestly. Yeah, it feels like his character goes a little better on NXT than it does on like the main roster. So I think they actually know how to utilize that. So, yeah. um, but, um, good match, um, Sami Zayn beat him with the Kokia Clutch, um, which I liked, and, uh, it was a good, and it was a good solid opening matchup, and then, um, what else happened, because I'm trying to just go off the movie, um, we had Apollo Crews versus Ty Dillinger, um, this actually was a solid matchup, I really enjoyed it, I love Ty Dillinger's character, the perfect 10 gimmick, is any injured now? Um, I'm not sure I haven't kept up the date on that. And he hits a suicide dive on the cruise on the floor, and then he hits his finisher. It's like the eat defeat, except um, he puts it's the knees defeat instead. Um, oh, I've seen, seen it. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, but I thought he was going to win it right there, but Apollo Cruz kicked out, um, which I kind of would have been mad if Apollo Cruz a lot, so that would have been a nice surprise victory. Then afterwards, Apollo Cruz hits his 
alternative finisher where we get to win like the gut winch power bomb. Yeah, oh, that's fucking great. Love that finisher. And then afterwards he cuts a promo saying he knows he hasn't done anything on an NXT championship match, but he wants a match with Finn Balor because the last match ended off a disqualification and he wants to see who the better man is, which makes sense to have that match and it's a way to keep Apollo Crews um, in the main event and it gives something for Finn Balor to do. Because um, I don't think he's probably going to be defending his title again until NXT TakeOver Dallas. you got to find programs for him. And I think it works. I don't think anyone's going to win that match either. I think there's going to be another run in by somebody. Because um, I. Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, who did uh, Samoa Joe fight? Baron well, Baron Corbin fought um, this guy. Up, I forget his name, but he uh, fought this guy. He beat the guy. He fought this guy. He <laughs> fought. Did you fight the sky? I don't think you fight the sky. <laughs> like, I was like, there's a dude he's fighting a wrestler named the sky? What? <laughs> I don't think you fight the sky and win. I think yeah, the sky would outnumber Bailey Corbin. <laughs> oh. But anyhow. Shadow, Shadow Cloud Jutsu. Alright, anyway. But, um. I wonder if the sky's finisher would be the black belt. Because <laughs> <laughs> it turns dark. Anyhow. Um, but they couldn't do that until like 5 o'clock at night. So. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Bear Corbin won with the Eddie Gage, which I liked his finish, but it was a pretty good match. The, the guy, that guy that he was wrestling, um, hold his own against him, and he looked pretty strong. Um, I'd like to see more from that. i like to see that guy again, just so I could show you and say, hey, it's the guy that fought Bear Corbin. Um, what else happened, though? Um, there was no Elias Samson. That's kind of sad. Well, well was, actually, yeah, he debuted the, the next week, so I can't really complain. No, with Alex Lally, they hadn't returned until this week. Oh, they had a tag team match. It was Bailey and uh, Carmella versus Alexa Bliss and Emma with Dana Brooke because of Dana Brooke's injured, so they threw Alexa Bliss in there instead. Um, I actually like her already. Yeah. I think she's injured from something, but probably for Oscar kicking her teeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I like the match. Um, I actually like the pair up of Alexa Bliss and. Emma. Um, yeah, I do too. And they attack Bailey um, and come before the match, so pretty much they get the heat on Bailey for a while. And then Carmella gets the hot tag and gets her into that head scissors submission. Pretty much the same thing as Sami Zayn, except she does it a little differently. Um, it makes uh, Alexa Bliss tap out. And now Alexa Bliss has faced Emma this week, so. Uh, I yeah. cannot wait for that match. Not Alexa Bliss, uh, Carmella's facing. And I can and I like Oh, I, thought I I know where they're going. I think it's gonna be Emma versus Bailey and yeah. take over. I wish I wouldn't complain about it. I like to see And it. I think it may be another match that might happen now will be Nia Jax and Oscar. Oh yeah. So I like that's to see that great too. I don't I don't I, was it the, was it last week when Nia Jax like squashed someone? Was it la, was that last week's NXT or was it on this episode? No, that was that was last week's okay. Um and, and then they, they did those promos building up the match to Blake and Murphy versus um, um, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable, and that's when Jason Jordan and Chad Gable got those. Yeah, see, the funny thing is, I love how simple they build up the next episode. Yeah, it's kind of funny that and like WWE about, does not do that at all with their main shows. Yeah. They never do it with SmackDown or Raw. They just they at least build up to the next show all the time, you know. Like so, that, I don't think they've done that too. since like two thousand eight. Yeah. Um, but then um. What else though? Um, but yeah, the, I like the feud too, the doing with uh, Bailey and Carmella. I uh, think it was uh, really solid. Um, I actually like that they're doing the friend versus friend feud. If it's not, then they're both faces, which, and uh, I think it's actually going to work out pretty well. And I think, like, obviously, it's going to end up with Bailey retaining, but um, they're actually doing the build up where they question if Carmella is going to turn on Bailey, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think she's too over to go here, so. Yeah, especially considering the fact that he, there's, she's still with like the most over tag team yeah. in all of uh, in all of NXT. So. And I like that, even though um, it didn't happen on this show, I like that they're continuing the mechanics versus uh, Team Soft. Um, yeah, I like that. I can't wait to see them get the win. NXT is just good, man. It really um, is. And then the main event, Samoa Joe versus Johnny Gargano. Um, jo jo Samoa oh, Joe that much. sounds like a fucking great match. It was a great match, but pretty much Samoa Joe just straight up squashed him, which needed to happen because he needed to look strong going into next week. So well, it makes sense. Who was the same as Adam Rose. Adam Rose. Adam Rose. And mm -hmm. Paul Cruz fought that guy. Oh. That I don't know his name. And then, oh yeah, and then Baron Corbin fought. Yeah. So I like that they had everyone 
No, Apollo Crews didn't fight that guy. Then it's fucking Eric Corbin fought that guy. Yeah, Apollo Crews fought Ty Dillinger. Um, All right. And Finn Balor even said, even said, I don't know, I don't think he said on this episode that the match between Apollo Crews and himself is taking place uh, this, tonight, uh, which is going to be cool. Um, but um, yeah, Samoa Joe has beat him with the, uh, I think the Corky of Clutch, but he looked really dominant in the match. Johnny Gargano had his moments. It was pretty much like that match we saw with Congo and uh, Brian. Uh, Mike Russell at uh, Top World Promotions. It was pretty much like that match. So. Oh, that's good. All right. Yeah. Like so that. Johnny got down a good look. Got offense in, but it was I pretty guess much. I NXT just because of the way everything's laid out. And yeah. Sorry if the review sucks, but I think it's good. It became actually, I think I did get everything. I probably missed like a segment or two, but I think I covered everything that did happen. So. All right. Um. um so since we have time to kill. Oh yeah, we have to talk about the NXT signees and then we'll. Oh yeah, NXT signees. Austin Aries is on NXT, baby! And he's debuting tonight. Really? He is. If you guys haven't, if you guys did not know, Austin Aries is, has debuted officially on tapings. Yes. This episode is where he shows up, so check out NXT tonight on the WWE Network. I forget how much that costs. He gets it, he gets it, he gets it for free, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the way they. Always promote nine ninety nine, uh, but yeah, check it out. I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Really nine ninety nine. Is it really? They, it's like ten. It's because the tax, they tax it a little bit, so it's not really nine ninety nine. Some bitch. But what does that matter to you, buddy? Um. Um. But anyhow, anyhow, uh, what was I saying? But uh, Austin, I'm really happy, um, and I'm glad they got him when he. And he didn't. They got him now, cause I was like, I'm glad they didn't get him right after TNA, cause probably would have been pretty bad for him. Cause I don't, I don't think he, he went to win a bottom I know for a little bit, but I don't think he's really wrestled anywhere else. So it's all fresh, and um, I feel like his passion's gonna be back. We're gonna see the Austin Aries that we saw in 2012. Yeah, TNA. And, and it's it's funny, cause I remember the last time I saw Aries, and he looked pissed that it was on TNA. Wow, did he not look happy yet? He's just so, so effing disgruntled. I hope. I mean, I am hopeful that he will. He will actually stay with NXT though. Um, because he'll stay with NXT. He's not going back to Tana. No way. No fucking way. I mean, he's not going to go back with that fucking cesspool. You know, he's not that. What do you think Storm was going? Storm. Back? Storm went back because first off TNA offered him more money, and yeah. second off because they, they bribed him with real money. Yeah. And then he got to be himself. So of course he's gonna go back because he gets to be himself. You know? Yeah. I can't like you talked about. I can't believe it took Sto like you said. I can't believe it took Storm to be himself on NXT for them to get for them to be, for TNA to realize that they fucked. So pretty much NXT is pretty much the reason Storm gets to be himself on TNA. Yeah, exactly. So, so I don't I don't I don't uh, give any TNA any credit there. Yeah. And I'm going to uh, talk. All right. So, what are the what are the other signings for NXT? Well, so, but Austin, yeah, I can't wait to see what he does on NXT. I think uh, I'd like to see him face Joe. Uh, I don't think he'll, I, I don't think we'll get to face Sami Zayn in time for because uh, Sami Zayn probably will go up in the main roster before he. I don't know. He might. I think um, they are definitely going to do the same. I like to see him actually face Elias Samson at some point too. I think that would be. Good. Oh, that would be a brutal. Ty Dillon. Ty Dillon. Yeah, Ty, him and Ty Dillinger, him and Apollo Crews, him and Johnny Gargano. Uh, there's a lot Tommaso of people. Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa, yeah. Uh, Probably Barry Corbin, just to see him hit the Blade Bus one. That, that would look impressive. That would look very impressive, yeah, no kidding. Um, uh, but think, yeah. I think that's about. Uh, Finn Balor, obviously. Yeah, Finn Balor, obviously. He's but Finn Balor might get called up before. Uh, no, he might. He might, he might get I don't know, they still get two months, too, so. But um, the next one is. um. I don't want to say his name, but Nakamura. I think it's the other guy that they got from uh, Shinaka and Nakamura. Yeah. He's showing up at NXT Takeover Dallas. Oh, he's showing Nakamura. Yeah, Shinzaki Nakamura. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's making his debut, motherfucker. Right. Is it, who is he fighting? They didn't say who he's fighting. It's still too much. Please, away, so. please let it be a Tommy. Please let it be a Tommy. I'm gonna tell him he's gonna be healthy enough. Uh, God damn it. Uh, let it be Riley. Maybe? Yeah. Maybe Riley? I, I can see him and Riley in a stiff-ass match. Yeah. 
Be fucking amazing. Another guy I'd like to see here, he's face two, is Alex Violent. Shinzaki Nakamura, just, just pair these guys up on their Especially two out that we feel like Alex Violent's gimmick, because, uh, they would talk, Alex Wiley would say, you guys have been talking about these signees, but why were you talking about the return of Alex Wiley? Yeah, he's you know? a heel, and I love it. Um, that's all I got to say on that. Just gets so my skills. So so the two so signees. Um, obviously, we're probably going to get Doc eventually. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we might get Doc and Carl Anderson on even the main roster. They said it's in the main roster. I think, I think it more. makes sense for NXT just so they could be the heavies for Finn Balor for a heel turn. I think that'd be fucking Did awesome. Did you see Adam's video on how he booked the... Uh, yeah, 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 that's where I got that. But, um, before we... Alright, so we have some time to kill. Because I, I don't... I, my wife's not going to be here until about four. Same. So, I'm going to... I'm going to actually rant on something that I haven't ranted in a long time. And it's on TNA. Because there is a lot of people... Well, not a lot of people. I shouldn't really say that. I'm overstressing it there. Giving them too Some much credit. People. But there are a significant amount of people that are trying to give it the benefit of the doubt and that are and they're saying that they're turning things around. I don't see it that way. I want people to understand me when I say this. I have said that as a TNA fan so many times. And I started watching in 04 when they had him on Fox, maybe 05. I don't remember which year that was that they had him on Fox. But I started watching that, all right? And they've had their moments that were bad, but they also had made up with the wrestling. The wrestling was always top notch, and there was always action going on. That's why it was called Total Nonstop Action for a long while. But. What happened was, like, Russo got a, bur a burby pause in it, and it just went downhill from there. And I'll tell you this right now, I am not a fan of where TNA has gone. And they have no one to blame but themselves, and I will not. I don't, I don't understand how people can give it the benefit of the doubt, right? Literally, the day that they said give it the benefit of the doubt was the same episode that they did the double turn for, of EC3 and Matt Hardy for no reason, with no build-up whatsoever. I want to talk about that. So, this is always bugged me. Because Matt Hardy's a good heel. He's a great heel. But I, they, think, I think he is they a great heel. Months, he wants his win of honor shit, it's great. They took three months to do that world title series, right? Yep. No, actually, they had Matt Hardy win the title, and then they had to Celebrate with his family, mind you, also. Yeah. Celebrated with his fucking family. Take the title off him two days later because they finally done the real life, real reason because they had because you know they did they had to catch up because they were getting off uh, Destination America they had matches that were taped and they had to get them on the air and they didn't have any other future episodes taped so they waste three months I mean I wasn't watching anyways but they waste three months of their programming they waste three on months on this title series yeah. And not that's not all. That's not all. Okay. There's more, let's there's keep more. let's keep in mind that in that very same match that was happening with my Hardy and EC3, Drew Galloway was in it. At the time, TNA's hottest free agent. Okay? And they don't give him the title. No, who do they give it to? An irrelevant Matt Hardy. When he's yeah, a, okay. He's fat now. He, he had a good moment. And it, it, it's sad because he really did. And he really did. He had a, he had a great moment with yeah. his pop father and his brother and his wife. And his newborn son. And his newborn son. And it was just so good. And it was a happy ending. And, and, I, then, they I couldn't, and then they ruined it two days later because they don't know how to take shit properly. Now, as Owen said, you waste three months of your fucking program... Dedicated. Let me talk about what happened to this title series. Just to have Matt Hardy and EC3 be the final two guys. Yep. And Matt EC3 wins. Instead, like of, a, instead of Drew Galloway and Matt Hardy, which probably would have made a lot more sense. I'm that was fine with EC3 winning because if Matt Hardy had won that match, it would have been an extreme waste of time. But then, what do you do two weeks later? So you build it up to this story with Matt Hardy's a babyface where he never gets the job done. 
Then, two weeks later, to waste even more of our time, the whole World Title Series meant nothing. It means because nothing. Because he, him yeah. and his wife, turned heel, and I guess just beat up EC3 and walked away with the title. And, I think it's kids and, and now, now apparently, and this is another little detail that I don't understand, EC3 is injured. Yet there is footage via fan that they posted on their YouTube channel of okay, Ethan Carter walking away limping. He walked away without any help. We have a class going on. Oh, I did not know that you were in there. I yeah, so you sorry. shouldn't be yelling in my classroom right now. I thought it. Thank you. I did not know that. Okay, but um, yeah, there, there's my right there. You waste your time on that, and then you go to say he's injured. The guy who's actually making your cesspool of a program, I'm just gonna be blunt about it, entertaining. It's actually he makes it entertaining with whatever segment he's in. Now he's injured. He's kayfabe injured. You walked away. You walked away all right. You walked away fine. You saw the video, right? I haven't seen it, no. Okay. He literally gets up and walks away. No referees helping him or anything. And now he's not saying he's injured. That's something, WWE, this, that's something WWE don't even do. This fucking company. And you and you wonder why they, they don't have a TV deal. Yeah, they're not off cable. Like I do. It's like, off cable. It, it's, it's like, what are you doing? And Let's take a look what else has happened. They have that who, I don't segment. even know. I don't even know who the exhibition champion is. I don't think it's either T. Gray or somebody or somebody else won it. I don't even know. But now the spoilers have come out, and it's now even a more waste of time what, what because now? now you turned your second most over baby face, Rockstar Spud, heel. Then, you, like, Next for six years, maybe even eight years, this company has been nothing but a fuckfest of fuckfest storylines made with fuckfest writing. Made with fuckfest matchups, made with fuckfest feuds that turn it into a fuck. Fuck. What is it? What is it even the term I use? Fuck. Fuck up company. And you're telling me that TNA is turning things around. It's the same old shit. It hasn't changed. It's the same shit. Like and even it even. Even if it were to get better, okay. Even if it were to get better, I don't want to see it. Why would I even give a fuck to watch it? Okay, AJ's gone, Samoa Joe's gone, Sting's gone, Shelly's gone, Saban's gone, Young Bucks are gone. Uh, the, there's so Kurt many Angle's others. Kurt gone. Angle's gonna be gone. Stay. Storm was gone. Had to you had to bribe him with beer money to, and be himself just to come back. Oh my god, that's atrocious beer money. That's atrocious. Yeah, and 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 uh, it doesn't even seem like they're being themselves. Friggin', um, you know, friggin' low key. Su low key is gone. How much suicide's gone? Suicide's gone. Austin Aries. Austin Austin Aries is gone, and and. It just, and is disgruntled with you. And Magnus is gone. Mickey James. Mickey James. They have a knockout division anymore. Oh, where, where, uh, the, the knockout division is what? Awesome Kong with a bad back. Who's not their prime anymore. Gail um, Kim. Gail Kim, who is the only legitimate wrestler out of any, anyone at that company. And who really Lampers should be play, which is going, who really should just go back to Raw and actually help the Divas Revolution, to be honest. Or NXT. Or NXT. Um, like, you, you, I hope to God, 
Okay. And I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious when I say this, and I know people are going to say I'm an asshole for this, but I really hope TNA goes out of business. You want to know why I hope they go out of business? Because then WWE will buy the library, and maybe we'll get the TNA superstars to migrate into the company. The guys, the, the TNA superstars that are actually good, like Rockstar Spot, like Ethan Carter, like, you know, and we'll get Jeff Hardy back, obviously, Kurt Angle back, obviously. The you Wolves. Know, the Wolves. We'll, we'll get the Wolves in here. Like, I, I, I'd be... I'd be happy, you know, when when that day comes, and I, I and because it's been so bad since what the beginning of two thousand and fourteen. That was that was when they were off uh, Spike, right? They won the Destination America twenty fourteen. End of two thousand fourteen. End of two thousand. No, wasn't it end of two thousand fourteen? It was like towards the end. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. You got. I, actually, I'm gonna just say it right now. It, just gone downhill ever since Styles left. Yeah. And I don't even know what I don't I don't care about this company anymore. Even if it was making it turn around. Why would I care about something they had to do five years too late? Mike Bennett probably will be on the show now for this, but I, I'm sorry, and I, I I will I wish the best for those guys. I'm not saying that. If they had success in TNA, that's awesome. I think Ethan Carter's amazing. I'm not saying he isn't. And Mike Bennett's also fucking amazing. And so, and Matt Hardy's an amazing heel. Jeff Hardy has always been a great baby face. There's a lot of guys that are talented on the show, but the writing is fucking awful. I've been to top rope. I'm in top rope, and him and I have seen the some of the best writing yeah. in months. It's, it's almost like Top Rope should be running the TNA creative. Yeah. To be fucking fully honest with you. That might be too late. Might be too late for TNA to be Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, and I hope, I hope that's, I hope that won't be the case. I hope th that they can get that partnership with Point of Honor. I hope that they can get that partnership with Point of Honor Japan. and Top Rope. Maybe even New Japan again. But I just, I don't know if it will happen. And that's what I fear the most. You know, and because I want Mike Bennett to have a job. Maybe he will. I, I think it's very likely that he will. I mean, regardless of if TNA does not doing this or not, he'll be back in the Indies where he'll succeed or yeah. in WWE. I mean, I'm not really worried about Bennett or the rest of the kingdom for that matter because they're fucking all of them are phenomenal. We'll always see him on top. We're gonna see him on top of anyway. Yeah, exactly. So I'm happy about that. But it's like I can't. I, can't, I literally was trying to give TNA a chance because I went to top rope, um, and because Mike Bennett's in top rope. So I go on it, and that's this the first thing I see. I, I I was going to watch the full episode, and then I saw I think last week's ending segment with Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy, not even having a world title defense because. The fuck finish happened before the match started. Oh, that was bad. With Eric Young and, and Graham, for some reason, who are our team, and then Beer Money coming out of nowhere, and then all of a sudden Crazy Steve and, and Abyss. Like a team. Um, okay. And then all of a sudden they do this shit pile driver spot. I didn't, I didn't, like, like, I'm not going like, oh my god, put him in with a pile driver. I'm going, really? They're kayfaving him already with an injury, and he hasn't even been on TV in, for like, what, yeah. a month? I mean, who the hell is that how he feud with for? Now that Obvi fun. Obviously, Jeff Hardy doesn't even want to be there if he's going to be willing to, yeah. you know, I mean, take, take, a, take more time off after he just got, what, he rehabbed from yeah. his actual injury? That's yeah. pretty ridiculous. I get, um, he's not here. He signed a new deal with TNA. I don't know why he did that. I really don't know why he did that. Like, is this how you're really gonna go, Jeff? That's why I'm hoping that. That's why I also hope that TNA kind of goes out of business. Because like, I don't want to see, I don't want to see Jeff Hardy go down like that. I don't want to see Kurt Angle go down like that. I want to see guys actually thrive and succeed. Yeah. And I want to see them I feel like the best that they could ever be. And I feel that's like what they get with NXT. And hell, 
you know, I'm not saying that they don't have good matches still. I'm not saying that. I'm pretty sure if you, I'm pretty sure Drew Galloway and Kurt Angle had a hell of a match on TNA. I'm not saying that. It's just, what's the purpose? I feel like Kurt Angle isn't really the kind of, he's just gonna go go to WWE. And hell, I mean, if they were smart, they'd actually pair Drew Galloway up with Mike Bennett until Matt Taven comes back, but they're not gonna do it. Um, at least I don't think, because it's TNA. Instead of why, why not, right? Um, but with that being said, still got um, time to kill. <laughs> since we still got time to kill, did come up with a storyline that involves I TNA. I, twist the okay. I think we should start now okay. and then continue it on Mass Oil Wrestling Corner or the Active Shop Corner with Chris on, okay. say, Monday. I don't know. So we kind of switch our schedule around a little bit this week. So, me and Chris were talking about it in the calf in detail, and I literally came up with this idea last night. and kind of just sat up and thought about it. And uh, the first thing that came to mind was, it, it, this is all fantasy. I don't think it will ever happen. But if it did, it would be because Vince would not be a stingy person anymore. And he would actually work with other wrestling companies. So, uh, the first thing is, TNA, say hypothetically, does go out of business. By then. By then. And WWE buys him out. Which the man is AJ Styles, so. Uh, which, by, which then, at that point, hey, you know, WWE buys TNA, they have the library, and they have a bunch of athletes to use at their disposal. How do you use them properly? Well, this is what you do. You take the top rope guys also, you integrate them to TNA also, and then they're a part of TNA. So it's a TNA top rope like partnership where they are allowed to be in TNA on the TNA side on WWE television. And then, of course, you bring in GFW as well. So you mix the two of TNA and GFW, and they team up and top rope also, and you have them go after WWE. Seems pretty good, right? Seems awesome. And, uh, you know, with that being said, um, you know, they go after the W, they go after the WWE main roster guys. Okay, we're, we're, we're talking like a bunch of different people. The, the Jeff, Jeff Jarrett does, never goes after AJ Styles for reasons because he's, you know, his friend. He's been his friend for years. Um, and if this happens for a couple weeks, say, or a few weeks, it just kind of integrate in and interfere in main events on Raw. And it's like, what, what is going on, right? And so they're securing all of the buildings to the point where so the GFW and the TNA guys can't get into the building. And so the match happens. So say, and then uh, so WrestleMania happens. Say hypothetically, that TNA actually went out of business before Mania. So this is actually happening as Mania is happening. So they have to have brain security all over the place. Um, Mania who goes off without a hitch. Uh, it's Triple H versus Roman Reigns. And the shocker of all shockers say Triple H actually retains the belt, right? Which would get the heat on it right away with the Mania crowd. And so the first segment on the show is Triple H with him and the same old authority promo. And then guess who comes out? Finn Balor, the NXT champion. So Balor would come out, hit him with. Uh, he would uh, have a good. He would have like a good ten minute match with him. He would get him to the, uh, get him. He would really kick the crap out of Triple H. Hit him with the coup de gras. One, two, three. He's a new WWE champion. Vince is shocked. Stephanie is shocked. The next week on Raw, the following week. Vincent comes out and calls out Finn Balor. He said, I'm not mad that you beat Triple H. You beat him fair and square. He issued the open challenge. You stepped up and you won the belt. You won the bigger one. You're now a superstar. Is he still the NXT champion at this point? Yes. Nevertheless, having that being said, as Vince would always say, you would have to, you have to, you can't be champion and you can't be uh, a double champion on two separate shows. So you have to give one up that's the less meaningful. And what Vince thinks is the NXT title. 
Finn Balor scores it and hands over the WWE Championship. Which then ensues with the Savage Shoot promo. Saying to Vince, I say that the NXT title means more than this belt that for the last five years has played hot potato. I've used this belt and everyone else that has ever won this belt has fought some of the very best in the world while well, you guys scramble to find out what the heck, you know, who the heck has to be your next baby face of the company, whether it's Roman Reigns or John Cena. But it don't matter in NXT because in NXT, the face of the company is the best and I am the best thing going. Holds up the NXT title directly in Vince's face like a metaphor before a flip off and walks off with the NXT title. Vince does his feel you're walking out on me! Yes. And he's gone. He's gone back down to NXT. Uh, before he leaves, Triple H is trying to reason with him, like, dude, you beat me. Why are you leaving? And he said, part of me, but I don't need to feed you or your old man's ego. He drives off. So there you go. Legitimately, like, that. that's how you do it. Um, and then... It sets up some things. So the WWE title is now vacant again. So they have to have yet another tournament to crown a new WWE champion. And it comes down to the final two guys. AJ Styles and John Cena. Would Cena be healthy? Would he be healthy in time? He'll be healthy in time. He's super Cena. It's in two months. He'll be back. That'd be a great matchup. So I'm going by Cena Super Healing Syndrome and cross fingers. Hopefully that happens. So it's John Cena and AJ Styles. AJ Styles wins clean in the main event. He doesn't, but I got something. So now that the security is gone because GFW and TNA haven't really invaded, they don't know what they don't know what's going on. The guy about them too. So because of that. TNA is uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's in the building though. He actually got himself in the building and he wanted to talk to Vince. And him and Vince are talking to try and work out a deal. And Vince tells him to get the hell out of his office. So you don't forget that this is still going on. So did this happen before the pay per view? Basically a long promo version of that. So this happened after the Finn Balor thing. So now, after the pay per view, by the way, so the semi final matches would actually happen on the pay per view itself. Because I want this to happen on the Raw specifically. The match between AJ Styles and John Cena. They go. They have a clinic in the ring. Probably going to be one of the best Raw matches of all time. It's John Cena and AJ Styles. They go for everything. Springboard stunners. Pay, uh, springboard DDTs. Pele kicks. Fine knuckle shuffles. Attitude adjustments. Styles clashes. And spiral taps. Cena leg drop. Everything. They're just going everything. Reverse suplexes. Uh, you, you, Freaking the flying fist drop, everything they go for broke. The calf killers reversed into the STF, reversed into another calf 450 killer. Splashes. 450 splashes. Um, Cena with maybe another springboard stunner. Now, at some point in the match, the ref takes the ball. So the ref is down, um, and as the fans are chanting, this is awesome. So that's your cue to end the match, like as a match, and then go into a storyline match. So, storyline match mode. So now the referee is down. All of a sudden, Doc Gallows is on one side of the of the crowd. Carl Anderson's on another. But that's not all. Kenny Omega, the new leader of the Bullet Club. Baron Corbin. Bobby Fish from Winter Water. All of a sudden, these guys are like surrounding the ring. Like the Nexus. When they like the Nexus. No one knows what's going on. And these guys keep flocking in. NXT, Ring of Honor, and New Japan guys are keep keep flocking in. They're, they're making their way into the into the show. Samoa Joe's there. Uh, Shinsaki, Nakamura, like Austin these Aries. Austin Aries, they're all coming out. And they're with, they're with, Carl, it looks like Machine Gun Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. 
And then on the stage comes out Finn Balor, Okada, and Jay Lethal. Okay, they're walking down the ring and they give the signal to hop over the barricade, just like the Nexus. I know it's a little bit of a rehash, but just go with it. So they surround the ring. AJ Styles and John Cena are back to back. It looks like they're going to try to fight these guys off. So when Balor gives the cue to go up on the apron, he's all of them. They're getting their fists ready. And John Cena is about to throw the first punch, and then AJ turns them around, Pele kick. Fans are shocked. And then AJ screams, Now! Starts beating up on Cena. Like, this is a mugging. This is like Nexus times five. It's like the mugging of the century. It's like guys that are ten times more talented than these guys ever were. They're beating the living piss out of Cena. And literally to the point where he's bleeding. So, they are throwing him into every corner imaginable in the ring. They tear up everything. They start beating up announcers and timekeepers. And they are just owning the show. And here comes, from the stage, in shock, Vince McMahon, Triple H, Stephanie. They don't know what to do. They're shocked. And AJ Styles, the ref's still down, by the way. But, like, the ref literally is taking a freaking Pele kick. Like, a like, he took, like, a huge Pele kick that hits him right on the temple. So he's out for a while. And after Cena has been decimated and put through the table by Doc, and, Doc, and, uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson with double jokes on him, AJ Styles, that has the Styles clash on the outside, rolls Cena back in methodically onto the other side of the ring. where the ref is. So the ref is right where Cena is. He's laying on the corner like where the steps are near the announcer table. That's where the ref is. He's like right near that side and Cena's like right in front of him. And he's still out. He's trying to regain consciousness. So the Bullet Club are out of the ref's peripheral vision. And AJ looks dead at the authority. Does the Bullet Club sign Blows the gun and hits the spiral attack for the one, two, three. And then at the end of the night, the Bullet Clubs celebrate with the NXT Ring of Honor and New Japan athletes. And all you see on the shoulders of these guys is Jay Lethal with the Ring of Honor world title, Okada with the IWGP world title, Finn Balor with the NXT world title. And now AJ Styles with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Keep in mind, after WrestleMania, this is week three. Okay? <laughs> this is week three. We're heading into extreme rules. You put, the, you put the puzzles there. So, week four happens. And all of a sudden, like... Jared is all delighted because he was told to get out of Vince's office. He's kind of pissed at Vince denied him. And so he said, well, Vince, it looks like you're outnumbered because you got two different enemy factions now against you. So I'll tell you what, since you're such a tough guy, why don't you have our guys face us GFW and TNA? And who knows? We don't work with these guys. We don't work with any of the guys in the other organizations. But they may, they might come down. Hinting that they may just help him. He doesn't make a deal with them. But he hints that they may help him. So then, face-off happens. That's the ending segment. So it's Jeff Jarrett with his GFW and TNA guys. With Dixie Carter. Right? Um, and of course, the top rope guys integrated in. And here comes Vince McMahon with his WWE flock. And it's like a standoff. So it's like 12 guys and 12 guys. Right? So there you go. 12 guys on each side. And then all of a sudden, 
Evil Ways comes on with the Bullet Club remix. Bullet Club fit, fit, fit for life. And you know, the whole Evil Ways feel. How comes AJ? AJ is not just flawed, he's not actually flawed by Bullet Club, except for Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. And of course, he's also flawed by Jay Lethal, Okada, and, and Jay Lethal and Okada also, and Finn Balor. But the thing is, they actually rotated everyone around. So instead of seeing the, the Bullet Club members, you also see the New Japan, Ring of Honor, and NXT crew kind of rotate, which is what they failed to do in the original Invasion, by the way. I think that would have made it a lot better. So now, they, the WWE are cornered, all right? I want you to envision this. Can you imagine WWE guys, Ben Roster guys, cornered? <laughs> like, if you think yeah. about it, never, nobody in a million years would have thought this would happen, right? I don't even think WCW did that when they... Exactly. WCW. So they're legitimately cornered. And Jared's just... Jared and Dixie are just loving it. They're, they're laughing their asses off, right? So, uh, it turned, uh, the person that steps up to still take them off from the WWE side is over in Mario. This is just kind of the start of his face turn because I want him to go face. I think because WWE has to be the face in this scenario. Yeah. So, Del Rio steps up. Give the hardest slap in the face to Jarrett ever. And then the, the fight starts up. Here we go. Del Rio fired the first shot. The fight is on. Everyone is going at it. And, and it's just too much for WWE. New Japan, NXT, uh, Ring of Honor, GFW, and TNA just destroy the WWE guys in the middle of the ring. And then AJ is celebrating. AJ celebrating with Dixie, and here, here also comes, here also comes Gal Kim, right? She's celebrating with Dixie too. She's like her chosen one of the females. She's the knockout champion per se. But what happens? Boom! Both of them go down. Dixie and Jarrah are laying on the floor. GFW and TNA guys are shocked. Like the, I think the perfect face that you can get for this is, um, is. I, I would say uh, Drew Galloway. He's just like, what? And then AJ says, now. And then they start going after the GFW and TNA guys. So they just double cross them. All of a sudden, they, can, they go to the back, and here's the rest of the New Japan guys, the same ones from before, wrecking backstage. The Bullet Club is just going at it with the rest of that crew that was there before. And they're taking everyone out of showers, locker rooms, they're taking about interview segments and they're putting them through anything and everything that you can think of. So, are the people, so is that getting laid out? Like everyone's backstage? getting laid out. Everyone in backstage, everyone, including the tiny keepers again, the announcers again, because everyone likes to see JBL take a nice one in the freaking face. And even like when they, someone like Renee Young too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they go after everyone. Like the, the freaking beautiful people go after Renee Young. I mean, not the beautiful people, it's just dumbass. Um, the house. Uh, not that Oz. So, like, say, um, like, somebody, like, uh, the frickin' Oscar, uh, takes, uh, cleans Renee Young's claw, the interviewer. Like, everyone's in danger. Everyone. Everyone. Obviously, you can't have men on female violence, so that's why we do the women on men's violence. But we work around that. But anyway, besides that, everyone is, they are tearing up the ring. This, this is where they tear up everything. They tear up backstage. Tight drawn, the staging, the, the stage itself, like the rampway, they, they tear apart the barricades. They put people through separate barricades. Like the four biggest guys, like one side is Baron Corbin, another side is Doc Gallows, another one's Carl Anderson, um, a fourth one's Samoa Joe, and they just put them all through barricades. Like like so four scrawny dudes from GFW, like Sanjay Dutt or something like that, um, and also TNA, like Rockstar Spot, they just put them all through barricades. And then they're destroying the ring, dismantling the ring, piece by piece. They're just uh, they're destroying the ring. They're stepping on the wood and breaking it. And then they just hit a gruesome triple powerbomb. Uh, like, 
Doc Anderson had a core and a like pull off a shield, had a triple power bomb, and we exposed Wood onto Jeff Jarrett. And then they hit Vince with a plethora of moves. And then the last thing you see is Evan Bourne, similar to how Justin Gabriel hit the, hit the airborne, onto Vince McMahon, and then flipping him off. Raising their hands, like the, the Nexus did, the front man, yet again, AJ, Dower, Okada, Lethal. They all leave, and the whole place is shocked to the point where I would hope this is just pure speculation that it's just like a Nexus mix and the girl reaction where they actually have to call the cops where our fans are that scared. And that is where we're going to end off there. Because I don't want to give away. That's part one. We're going to talk about part two on the Aftershock Corner tomorrow. Because it seems like tomorrow? we get. Not tomorrow. This week. Uh, next week. Um, because we, we seem to get through the actual topics like gone out enough. So I kind of wanted to add something to this. But what do you think so far? I think it's weight. Um, I like uh, that it's just like that invasion angle. Um, and it'd be anything. It would just be something great to see. I think I think also too it's like a win win for everyone because you not see only guys that never you, you never thought to see in WWE. Oh my like, god, yeah. I mean you, um, you're seeing a bunch of guys. I mean superstar superstar would be uh, superstars would be so stacked if you having like three three star four star matches on superstars, which never happens. And yeah, everyone would watch all the shows. They would watch main event. They watch superstars. Like, like they would be wondering. They would be watching Impact. Maybe if it was still on the air, they would be watching they top world impact. promotion. They would be watching, you know, New Japan. They would be like, what the hell is going to happen next? NXT would even skyrocket even more. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they can't go wrong. If this actually happened, and, and see, the funny thing is, if Vince was smart, he would do that. And I'm telling you this right now. I'm not saying he will, and I'm not dissing him, but I feel like if he adopted Vince Sr.'s methods right now as we speak, this would make him go from millionaire to trillionaire by the end of this whole by the end of this whole thing. Because it's and it's gonna make everyone money. And it's gonna make them millions. Maybe even wrestling millions. wrestling would get popular again. But wrestling would get skyrocketing. Oh, they might. There definitely would be baseball. They definitely would. Be, they might even. Try, they might almost. I mean, I'm hoping this talking about fantasy. Almost be as popular as football. Maybe they yeah, might. They might be right too. I mean, put your comments down below, guys. Seriously, let me know what you guys think. If you like it, if you like where this is going, please let me know. Uh, this is called the new invasion. Uh, like, do. If you actually comment on all my videos, which I hope you do because you should, like write hashtag, hashtag um, Owens, or, or not hashtag Owens, but like hashtag new invasion. Um, this, this should happen. I would love this to happen. I mean, we all know in the end this is all fantasy and this will never happen. But yeah. if, the thing is, if Vince McMahon did adopt Vince McMahon Sr.'s methods, his father's methods, oh, it's been right, now, the line right now, like, this would be make gold mine. I mean, we're talking gold mine here. And I'm not stretching my imagination. And even when the storyline is over, you gotta think about this. They would have three shows that they can air. Raw, Impact, SmackDown, hypothetically, if they did my DNA. And they would be able to have a bunch of guys flock over to the main shows and be proud of it. And then not only that, but then NXT is is elevated, New Japan is elevated, Ring of Honor is elevated, Top Ropes elevated, GFW is elevated. It's a win-win. Yeah. It's a win-win for everyone and wrestling is like right up there. And there's like and you, you have like shows, it's like one, two, three or Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like in ratings, like can pretend I'm doing the hand motions of like ratings as bars. You know what I mean? So that kind of ends this one. Uh, you want to kind of sign off? All right. So make sure to check out this show. Um, we have a playlist. Not the great. I mean, you're not gonna get the greatest episodes because the Google Hangout and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so, obviously. Yeah. Great. Um, hopefully Google Hangout is fixed now. Um, yeah, Chris. 
Chris and I were talking about this, so I want to say thank you to Chris because he gave me a lot of the ideas also. And um, um, so man ahead class at that time joined in on fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, also, um, I don't think Chris is going to be part of the aftershock corner because. Uh, well, we, we, if, if we make it Mondays and then make the rest of the reviews Wednesdays, we yeah, we may have to switch around that. I think that that'd be better because I think that a lot of people would want to review like fancy storylines like this. Yeah. Um, Maybe we'll switch the days around. But yeah, uh, make sure to check the Facebook page. Um, just because that's where you get all the updates on what's going on with uh, yeah, the show. Yeah, um, And that's the best way to get in contact with us because I yeah, found friending YouTube YouTube fans on my personal Facebook. There's just too many people to keep track of. Yeah, I agree with that. That's and then, um, make sure to check out the Massasoit Wrestling Corner, because this is the big mother of the Massasoit Wrestling Corner. Well, I wouldn't say the mother. The, I would say, the like, baby, um, the, the brother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, make sure to check that out. We're going to do an episode on Monday. Yeah. Um, Wrestling Review Series, that returns this, this Friday. Um, I can't wait for that, actually. Yeah, I can't wait, too. Because uh, we haven't done that show. Um, we were worried that the show wasn't going to succeed anymore because I thought it was going to scrap it, but um, we should have sort of started it probably earlier than we did. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, check out that Facebook page as well, and then check out James' shit. You can plug your shit now. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, yeah, check out Limit Youth Wrestling. Right now we're on the process of, we're finally getting uh, getting to it. I haven't been able to edit because I've just been feeling like crap last week, so starting the editing process this week we're commentating one of the matches today um and then we're going to commentate and then we're going to i'm going to edit um zach uh zach and austin tonight uh and then that match will be done so it's most likely going to be at the, be at the middle of next week or at the end of this week like on a sunday so we'll shoot for sunday but i'm looking more like it's looking more like wednesday but um it will be done it will be shown for you guys so definitely check that out when you get a chance and, and then, uh, make sure you subscribe also subscribe to the channel and so uh, make sure you check out the what's better wwe off wall or wyw yeah wyw show um because uh, i compare the two shows and uh obviously hold on i'm just finishing up a show um i'll just hold on one second all right all right cool all right just uh give me uh, a few minutes and i'll be out all right, great. So I gotta yeah, that's my cue to go out, but um, but make sure to check that out because I compare the two shows. Obviously, it's gonna be dated the next two episodes because I review blah when it actually happens. Yeah, absolutely. Global, so. Don't forget also you want to check out. Um, I want you got I want you guys to check out um, uh, J J Hebert side uh, side ninety five channel. Don't forget to subscribe to that as well. I uh, just uploaded a Baron Corbin Titan Tron not that long ago. Uh, custom team with it uh, it's on loco bruises so check that out also check out the band it's a good band and uh, also check out the AJ universe which I brought Titan Charles from I feel like I don't promote him enough on everything so definitely check him out because he's fucking awesome at what he does and he should be hired by WWE for this shit because some of the Titan Charles they do now are fucking lazy and I want to see guys like AJ universe yeah. in working for WWE this shit check out the full football reporters yeah also and check out John Tuggies yep Check out uh, Melissa's YouTube channel. I don't know what it's called. Uh, Marissa C. C. Yeah, Marissa C. That's in the description. M A R I S A C. Because she talks about one point stuff in wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, and it's not it's like true. it's not it's that true. on, and she's actually serious on it. And yes. we, don't joke, we don't joke around, and she doesn't have multiple people like you from around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, disrupting classes some from time to time. By the way, sorry about that person that was behind that. I didn't know he had a class. I'm serious. Um, it didn't look like there was a class on that schedule when I first checked out that room behind us. But Check out my own the Talkinator channel. Oh, the Talkinator, CM Not, Others. Yes. There's 50 other million YouTube channels. That's the only two others. And uh, definitely subscribe to all the channels. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> I really wish we could, we, I could just make it so I could just, no, I'm, if I had a wireless mouse, would I be, okay, so oh, see wait, you guys wait, later. Wait, wait. <laughs>